Hey up, welcome to the Cannon Hall Farm Podcast. With us, the Nicholson Brothers, farmers Rob and Dave. We're two Yorkshire farmers who, along with our dad Roger, brother Rich and the rest of our family, have turned a farm with two sheds and a barn into an award-winning tourist attraction. You've seen us on the telly, live on Facebook, and now we're here with our brand new podcast. Across this series, we'll be looking at the key moments that got Cannon Hall Farm to the place we're at today. On today's episode, we're going to be joined by my brother Richard, my dad Roger, and we're going to share their memories of when we opened the farm back in 1989. Coming up. I brewed my beer up there, didn't I? <laughs> Using a fish tank heater. Yeah. 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 I didn't sample it, but you did, and you had two weeks off school. I got uh... <laughs> Busy week, Dave? Really busy. We got the commercial flock in, we wormed all the ewes, all the lambs, and then put them out on some nice fresh pasture. Fabulous. Well, you'll be glad to know I've been mating again. You're joking. No, I've been, uh, I've been hard at it. This time with the Shire horses. Right. Right, and, and Shire horses, as you know, the stallion is not in the next village anymore. Sometimes you have to travel as far as Carnarvon. Yeah. As Ramsbottom, even to York. Right. Well, and where did you pick? Ramsbottom. Sounds like a, a thrilling little uh, trip out there. Yeah, and I, and I think it was a very successful mating. So hopefully more Shire Falls to look forward to next year. I'm glad to hear it. Right. We are thrilled, proud and privileged to be joined today by... Brother Richard and our dad, Roger. Yeah, we're going to hear all about their memories and I can't wait to see what they've got to tell us. Should we move up one, Rob, on the sofa? Absolutely. Ugh. Just watch your leg, I can't be so Come on in, stand. lads. In you come. <laughs> You've heard our memories of 1989, but we've a few gaps that need filling in. Who better than to have our brother Richard, our dad Roger, to help fill those gaps? So, welcome to the sofa, boys. Richard, what are your memories of 1989? Well, actually, we go back a bit further than 1989, don't we? Because we go back to Home Farm Tea Rooms, which opened in 1981. Those were interesting times too. We were only opening during the summer, but, um, you know, there, was, there, were, there were a lot of decisions to be made, weren't there, Dad? On, I, I, on weekends, it was only weekends to start with. We yeah. just gradually built up all Weekends, the two while six? Something like that. It was two while six. Yeah. I remember the wage, 50p an hour. You got a wage? So much. Yeah, I did get a wage, yeah. I was, I was the chap who sat at the front of the tea room and took the money off people. And we had this old till. It was a bit like Arkwright's till in, uh, in open all talking, hours. It had an on. Yeah, it had an handle on the side and it fired out at you. <laughs> so you had to watch yourself. Yeah. And it never actually had any, because it was from pre-decimalisation. So it, okay. was, it was pound, shilling yeah, and pence. Work, well, sensible thing then. Yeah, if yeah. you say so. <laughs> do, do you think that opening two while six goes back to when people perhaps went to church more often than they do now? Uh, well, it could have done. Um, I would imagine we worked it out for the busiest part of the, the day. I mean, people did come out to the park. I suppose they dwelled longer as well back then. Uh, you know, six o'clock's late to finish. It is, but... Tea time, it won't, it's, not, it's not like making a dinner like people do now. Maybe my mum needed that amount of time to bake all them scones. No, it was, it was definitely the period that we felt was most lucrative yeah. to, to yeah. open. Yeah, I was. think but so. It shows how times have changed, perhaps. Mm. And we had a very limited menu, didn't we? Limited, uh, but it still stretched me. <laughs> <laughs> well, me too, because <laughs> I remember actually as, as things moved on and I was at college, we would get a couple of lasses from the village and I would do the cooking. And uh, during the summer holidays when I was back from college, I'd open it. The cooking? Well, when I say cooking, uh, we're toasting. We're toasted sandwich. I'm talking toasting, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, I, I was a toasted tea cake champion. And, uh, there you are, that's another bit of cooking. You don't yeah. want to burn them, it's all profit. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you don't know, but... So we, we did... my dad would be in the back scraping them. <laughs> <laughs> we did cold sandwiches. Toasted sandwiches, plain scones, fruit scones, oh, meringues. Yeah. Rosemary's meringues. Anything uh, else other than that? Plain, plain, plain cake with a, like a Victoria. jam in it. Chocolate and a chocolate and, cake. And cream. 
And a chocolate cake with cream in. We did... Um, that was about it. We did coffee cakes later on. I know those meringues, people still talk about those meringues in yeah. the village. For me, it was a little bit disappointing in opening it because we used to have our table tennis table in there. We did. I must admit, I was going to mention that. You know, yeah. we used we to had play some... run around. Yeah. We had to prop the floor up underneath it to hold it up because we were bouncing around too much. We had our snooker table in the storeroom, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Just up those two steps into the storeroom. And I actually had my dark room in a little uh, room off the main tea room from uh, yeah, when I, I was at college. And your beer making kit too. I, be, I, brew me, I brewed my beer up there, didn't I? <laughs> Using a fish tank heater. Yeah. 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 I didn't sample it, but you did, and you had two weeks off school. I got uh, <laughs> Home Farm Tea Rooms was not only a tea room, it was a brewery, yeah. it was a dark room, it was a table tennis facility. It was our playground in the winter months when the cafe were closed. Now, if you go back when we were really young, we had a few pigeons in there as well. We built a pigeon loft in yeah, there. Yeah, the pigeon. How about yeah. the laying ends? Yeah, I think we had some ends we, in there. We had, we had, uh, yeah, we and, had a few and now, couple hundred laying ends in there. We, and now it's where David lives. So yeah, it's yeah. had a varied existence. It has, yeah. It's had, it's had some really, really difficult creatures in there, but nothing as it difficult has, as it's it got it now. <laughs> Before we came, it had a boat in and... Uh, Did it? Yeah, the boat that they punted about oh, on the on the, the water at the bottom yeah so I, i'm casting my mind back now to 1981 to the grand opening of home farm tea oh, rooms yeah. and the grand opening it was and and you were in your safari suit i was and um and, and everyone, everyone was 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 dressed to death and uh, and and keen to impress yeah and we had bounds this quarter of a million pound center half mick mccarthy and the floorboard started to creak they did what did you do I went, and, I went and got as many props as I could and propped it up underneath. <laughs> so the, the joists were sagging yeah. and you acted quickly and <clears> made sure that they couldn't fall through and possibly leave us with a lawsuit that we would have no chance of paying. That's right. Well, it would have been in real trouble yeah. with that one. Because <laughs> back in those days, we really had to watch the pennies, didn't we? So yeah, yeah. When, when you had that floor put in, you maybe didn't use quite as thick a timbers as... I don't well, think there'd they, be a structural they engineer there. involved, would they there? Were, no. They were there. They were the, the oak timbers that had always been there. We just chipboard on top, wasn't it, really? Something like that. But yeah. it was, I think the difference was there were 70-odd people upstairs. Yeah, and, and, and they weren't... It was not, not built for that, yeah. even. But you, you might even <coughs> have the same chipboard that I've got down today. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, I think it might be. Yeah. But anyway, I, 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 I banged in... I don't know, quite a few supports. And, I can remember you doing and it. And it, it, held, it held tight yeah. then. And after that, we did a bit more remedial work on it and made sure it, mm. it wouldn't come in. So, home farm tea rooms, strong yeah. start, it yeah. was very popular. Yeah. But it didn't quite seal the deal in terms of providing additional income. Well, we weren't open long enough. No. We, you know, we, we had to... Uh, but we did it for the busy times. Uh, and and there was no other attraction other than walking around the park. But yeah, you're right. It, it was very it was very popular. But you, you did you did put your prices up the first, after the first week. We though, did, didn't you? yeah, yeah. You. I don't think it was twenty six or twenty eight quid we took in that first. And you were exhausted. Uh, yeah, we'd been working like Billy O for four hours, which uh, we were quite a bit disappointed that. But then you looked at your prices. And they weren't enough, really. Uh, and You've always it, liked to be valued for money, though, haven't you, Dad? I've always wanted it to be down there more than up there. Yeah. Because I think it just puts people off. But, you know, you can be a, you can be a busy fool, can't you? you know? I suppose so. But, you well, know, you, you try learn, and do the right Learn thing. not to be a fool. We, yeah. We've had a few celebrities around the, uh, the tea room. I remember Nora Batty used to come. Yeah. Uh, Kathy Staff. You know, that was, um, yeah, from, uh, what's he called, the programme now? Last of the Summer Last Wife. Yeah. Sophie Ellis Bexter visited once. Did she? Yeah. yeah. You'll not know who she is, Duddy. Not really. Okay. She's a pop star. Oh, probably. Yeah, right. But then. she visited as a baby with her mum. All oh, right. Who used to host a children's Janet TV programme. Janet Ellis, yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Was that Jigsaw? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. So these are minor claims to fame, aren't they, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, going back a few more years, Rob, I mean, do you remember when the Queen came? 
you yes. know, you know, and and vis and they had to, you had to lock the farm down, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we had to. They they, they searched all the buildings, make sure that everything was safe. But and that was Mr. Farsi was done again then. Did you? And and, and <laughs> Harry Fisher was the mayor of Barnsley. He said, bloody hell, I thought it was Charlie Claw. Now you'll know who Charlie Claw was. Who was Charlie Claw? Yeah, well, he, he was a, an entrepreneur of, of the time. Oh, right. And, uh, and where did you buy your safari suit from? Can you remember? I have no idea. <laughs> I <know. laughs> I mean, my mother will have bought it for him, really. Have you much. still got your safari suit? No. You got rid of it? <laughs> he so. looked a little bit like Roger Moore. He yeah. had one, didn't he? He looked good, didn't he, in it, when you look at the pictures, you know. Because you had sort of sideburns then, didn't you? So you were a bit... Yeah. You know, looked like, well, I had hair and everything. Looked like Dactari <laughs> in his white safari suit. I looked a bit like that Spanish golfer, I thought. Oh, Severiano yeah, Ballesteros. Yeah. Oh, is that what you were after? <laughs> is that the look you were going for? <laughs> it was always difficult to get Dad to spend money on, you know... But if you haven't got it, unnecessary thing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But like our first leaflet when we when we were opening the farm, I was sort of you know I was looking at all the other leaflets that places had got. You know they're all full colour and glossy. And uh, I said to me dad, "Can we have a leaflet, dad?" And he said, "Well, first year I don't think we even had one." And then he sort of he relented because maybe we ought to be handing them out, you know. And uh, I said, "Well, can we do a colour one?" And he said. Why would you need a colour one? You need black and white, that's what you need. And I said, well, could we go for two colour, maybe? And he's, in the end, I battled cream. it out with him and we got a cream paper with a, a, a dark brown and then black. And, uh, and you allowed me a few photographs on it as well, oh, didn't you? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, you know, I mean, and I understand I, it was... Yeah. It was I, I, yeah, I was reluctant because... I understood that we got to make it pay and we had to pay for whatever we were doing. With every pound that you take, you might be left with 10 pence, but with every pound you spend, you lose the old pound. You do. And You're actually right. printing yeah. cost a lot more back then proportionately than it does now because it's such a more... Yeah, it's, it's a more technical. Yeah. 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 You know, it was, it was quite a, a job a to make the plates yeah. and then... Home Farm Tea Rooms is, is doing well, but it's not filled the void that, that we need in terms of making a viable income. We're all reaching an age where we're thinking about leaving school. Yeah. It's obviously on your mind that you want to create sustainable jobs for all of us. Yeah. So what was next, Dad? Well, I suppose the idea of opening the farm came, came along then. Yeah. Uh, I suppose when we'd, we'd opened the cafe, it, would, it, it introduced us to that world a little bit. Yeah with customers coming in and uh, and so the idea seemed better better still then because uh, we got something to offer there and we got people coming to 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 actually be customers so can, can you remember what the first step of the process was did did we you applied for a, a grant from the Ministry of Agriculture yeah, didn't you were there any planning a, permissions to achieve a, or anything a diversification permission I think that's yeah. what we needed I don't think we had any planning problem no, really, I don't think because we, we were just altering the farm buildings a little bit to yeah. uh, to make it sort of acceptable mm. for, uh, for, for for people to walk around the farm and can you remember how many years it took us to to get from from taking you know slightly dilapidated farm to a point where we were we were fit to to welcome visitors to the farm it took about four years did it uh, probably we were taking slates off roofs and changing things all yeah yeah because it by then things had got a bit dilapidated because i said before that you couldn't have enough money to actually repair things and so uh, we had to devise a, a method of doing that and doing that meant that we would have to sell something. We hatched a plan, didn't we? Yeah. we? We decided we would sell some redundant farm buildings. There were, there were three of them. Well, one wasn't redundant, we lived in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we decided we would get planning permission yeah. to convert an outbuilding into a house that we could live in. Yeah. We then sold the farmhouse. We sold two other outbuildings that, that were converted to be houses. Yeah. That gave us some working capital yeah. that we could reinvest into building uh, the, the farm up to be a, a tourist That's attraction. Yeah, yeah. 
there was one or two grumbles, uh, you know, when we were applying for planning permission with the tea room, weren't there? Did you have uh, to yes, I, I, I had to do uh, uh, a bit of per persuading then and, and, and thank... Uh, Darry Fish. Darry Fish for backing me, really. And he was the mayor of Barnsley? He was the mayor of Barnsley, but he lived in Cawthorn. And uh, he said, I, I remember going out of the room when they came for a site visit. And I, I heard him say, come on, lads, give the lad a chance. So, and who knows, if he'd, if he'd it, not have said that, none of what went after... It might never have happened. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So really, that was a turning point for us, being able to open the tea room in the first place. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. You know, with, yeah. without that little bit of income, uh, and the and the well, the encouragement to open the farm. I think the experience as well of actually having a little go at, at something different maybe yeah. gave us the confidence mm -hmm. to, to, to press on, on and, next and take move. that next step. Yeah. I mean, you could understand there was a little bit of reluctance among the councillors and such because they had always had a cafe, but it never worked. And they sort of opened it up a few times and had to shut it again. And it was at the time when it was shut that there was no cafe there. So, uh, but they would be thinking, well, maybe we could do this, but they'd already tried it, so... Uh, he mm. persuaded them to let us have a go, and, and we did. Um, so we'll be forever in his debt. Yeah, yeah. In a previous show, David and I have talked about our first memories of the day that we opened the farm to the public. What about you two? What sticks out for you? I remember how hard it was for people to push the push chairs well, uh, on that, that lamp, limestone lamp, chipping yeah. that we put down. We thought it looked nice. It, lo it looked really good. But then all the kids are sort it, of... It, it wasn't so bad if they pulled them backwards, wasn't <laughs> it? <laughs> it, it, it <laughs> but you can't go out and tell everybody <laughs> to... Uh, it wasn't a friendly thing from that point of view, but it did look good for, for an opening. Yeah. Well, it looked better people. than the sea of mud that was there before. <laughs> yeah, it, absolutely, it? yeah. Yeah. That was on the way out, though, wasn't it? So we've talked about build it and they will come, and thankfully, they did come. Yes, they did. As uh, many as you'd hoped for? Well, when you look back, not in enormous numbers, but it, it seemed to work for us. It gave us encouragement to, to go on again and, and improve again. Uh, I think it was 13,000 people came. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which now doesn't sound very, very, very many, but... Uh, mm. Uh, it was enough back then just to make a difference, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, the, the, the money coming in, and it, I mean, we only charged, what, a quid or something like that? I think less than that. 50p and 75p, I think it was. Right. When, when people arrived at, at the farm entrance, we'd got a, a little cabin, hadn't we, where we'd, we'd bag up animal feed, they would, mm -hmm. they, would, they would buy the animal feed, they'd take it off into well, I don't even next think place. we sold animal feeds we didn't. first off. That, didn't we? that was when I met Anita. We didn't sell anything, we were just... We just basically took the money on that thing, and I, I did suggest to me dad that when school trips came and stuff like that, that maybe we could sell them a rubber and a pencil and stuff <laughs> like that, like we'd bought when we were... And a postcard. And a postcard. Stuff like that, yeah. And I, and, and I said to me dad, could we invest in, in these? You've got to order a thousand, I said. And he said, who's going to want to buy them? <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna who's gonna be interested in buying pencils and rubbers and i said but you know like when we go on school trips dad we we do we do take some spending money and we do buy stuff and he said but a thousand we'll not we'll be they'll take years to sell them we've probably still got them <laughs> you probably have <laughs> they, probably they had rainbow years. stripes on them them rubbers yeah. i can remember them uh, all i can and do I drew, is apologize for not being too uh, i drew a little i drew a little cow logo and we put that on we can an all yeah. farm you were just being shrewd dad you yeah. you know yeah okay I'll... but you know it you were never sort of that keen on looking for those extra extra sales you know yeah. like you you, you well I, I probably you tend to view the world be sales that's all mm, you tend to view the world in as if you were the only customer in the world <laughs> yeah and i'm not a good customer <laughs> i'm better now than i was but like when we when we sold um uh, soft drinks for the first time it was it was panda cola wasn't it and you refused point blank to stock coca-cola because it was 
more it's expensive. Panda's a strong brand. It's gone from <laughs> yeah. strength to strength. Yeah. It was twice as there much. Was panda beverage. lemonade, panda cola, panda orange. It was literally twice as much. And I also said, people keep asking if, if it's cold, Dad. And my dad said, well, put it on the ice cream fridge and then a bit of that cold will come up into <laughs> that, into those cans. And you can say, I've got it on ice cream fridge. It'll be a little bit cooler. Who needs Coca-Cola when you've got Ben Shores? That's yeah. what I say. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made it big. Uh, uh, but now we do like to sell local stuff if we can. Oh, no, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Absolutely. And, yeah. and I think that, you know, there's definitely something that people are looking for. You know, I love the fact that we're getting our honey. So you've come around to my way of thinking. Yeah, the honey you? that's produced on the farm yeah. into the farm shop, that yeah. sort of thing is yeah. wonderful, I think. Yeah. I don't think you've ever been out of fashion. I think people lost their way and have come back to your way of thinking. Don't I'll agree with it's that. A good way yeah. of thinking of it. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're not all, you know, some of, I mean, let's face it, Dad. It was your idea to open up to the public. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your idea for the tea room? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I think so. It wasn't your mother. So, really, <laughs> you know, just being a bit negative about branding and. Uh, yeah, I wasn't gift, being negative, I just found it know, amusing it, at the time. It isn't, the uh, isn't the, that bad. The basic ideas were there. Yeah. Uh, it just needed. Well, I mean, I remember when I was about 10 or 11 drawing out a, a plan for a, for a rabbit room. And, and we got one in the end, didn't we? Yeah, we, got, we, did. uh, we, yeah. we, we reared Angora rabbits and my mum knitted, knitted, the knitted their wool into yeah. jumpers that we, that we sold in our first gift shop, which was in David's bedroom. True enough, yeah. Mm. We'd I obviously mean, had, had the, the, the thing in our mind for quite a while, hadn't we? Mm. You know, the, the fact that we would like to, to go down this road. Well, but I think it was, it was finding the money to make that initial investment. And yeah. it was only when we got the planning permission through for those, Bill, those buildings yeah. to be sold off that we yeah. managed to, yeah. to, to get the thing moving. Yeah. And then, then all of that money was almost immediately swallowed up oh, by God. a sewerage system. Well, it, yes. Wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, we had to have a, well, we had to have a sewerage system a bit later on, really uh, a lot better than, uh, than it was to start with. But. There's a lot, a lot of money to spend before you even reach the ground, isn't there? Yeah. Mm. You know, all, all the, the drains, and, and it, it was a daunting prospect, wasn't yeah. it? That, that first sewer that, that we put down through the farmyard, because obviously without functioning toilets, you can't open. No. We, without treating the waste that you produce properly, then that's not acceptable either. So there's, there's money to spend just to and start. we were digging down 18 foot. Well, it for worried. us to look at, uh, to live in the buildings that we were changing, we had to have a sewage system in it anyway. Mm -hmm. And by the time we got to the top of those first row boxes, we'd nearly run out of money. Yeah. So, luckily, in stepped Uncle Laurie with his digger and... Your uh, brother-in-law. Yeah. And uh, you know what? There's been times over the years when people just seem to have come along at the right time to help out, haven't they? Well, probably I think. so. I mean, well, I was probably there at the right time to, to help him out with, when... It, when the holes were dropping in round his farm because of mine working mm -hmm. uh, and he had to bring some stock up here so so just for the benefit of the viewers uncle laurie had subsidence on his farm yeah which you was right all, next to redbrook pit wasn't it yeah you took all his animals in to make them safe yeah and then years later he repaid that debt by yeah. finishing off our yeah. our sewer dig when and, we'd run out of brass and he didn't send us a bill so no. yeah and it was all a very informal relationship. It wasn't, you do that and I'll do that. It yeah. was just, you just did a family it, friend. How it happened. Yeah, you did him a good turn. Yeah. And that's how the world worked then, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's the story of how we opened, Dad. But I've never asked you this. Where did you actually get the original idea from? Well, we went on a sort of trip down to Devon. and we. we but was that trip actually a holiday? It was a holiday. Yeah. A, a trip, that rare that and a precious trip? thing. Yeah, a family a, holiday. It wasn't yeah. a business trip. It was a holiday. It's probably okay. the, the one and only one when, when we all went together. Yeah. to be quite honest. So, uh, and we went to Pennywell Farm, which which was a, a an open farm on the south coast. Also, at that same time, I'd visited uh, Chatsworth House and uh, the. Uh, Henson's oh yeah uh, yeah Henson's Cotswold Farm, Farm Park Cotswold Farm Park 
that while we were down there, we visited a zoo as well. So all these things were building up in, in my mind that we could probably possibly do something like that. So uh, that's originally how the idea came to uh, into our into our thoughts, and we we were already doing the tea room and such. So together with that and and the visiting these farms, uh, the idea sort of blossomed. All we needed then was some money to do it. And luckily, we got the planning permission through in yeah. time. Well, we set it all in motion then. Uh, it was it was a way out for us. Uh, and we did, and we, we, we managed to sell those sort of three uh, properties, uh, put the other ones up that we, uh, we to, for us to live in, and uh, away we went. So this is an absolute last roll of the dice, isn't it? Uh, if we, this hadn't worked, it well, would have been for sale. Yeah. We'd have gone off feeling like we'd failed to a degree? Yeah, well, we would have failed. We would? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and that would have been unthinkable. Yeah, yeah. I suppose on the, on the plus side, you had, a, you had three lads who were cheap labour. Well, I didn't think they were very really cheap at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, right, I were on a YTS scheme. Yeah. I think you were on it before me, Rob. And my dad actually said to me, he said, um, you know, I have to pay half your, your, your wage. He says, do you really need it? <laughs> he said to me. £27.50 a week. I says, yeah, I need it. went it. a lot further then, though, didn't it? It did go a lot further. You could get a, sh a nice shirt from Burton's for about 20 quid, I think. So That sounds a lot. It, it sounds a lot sound to me. You still get one for 20 quid. I don't think they were 20 quid. But. Yeah, well... I know they were quite expensive. I, I know, it, I know you could get a pint it. for not much more than a quid. Yeah. yeah a pound a pint. Well, I, I, I can remember when uh, there were about seven pence for a glass of beer. Can you? Yeah. Well, I reckon, I reckon the first half pint I ever bought was in the trade fair in... I was be about 15, I think, and it, the trade fair at Cannon Hall yeah. in the park. Yeah. I think it cost about 38p. Right. And he said, I'll serve you this time, but don't come back. <laughs> 38p. Yeah. I bet you didn't enjoy it either. No. Horrible. <laughs> bitter. Yeah. Half a bitter, please. <laughs> so uh, that's how we got moving, really. So we sort of knew that there were places out there that could do what we were hoping to do. We just needed to get it done, and thankfully we did. And mm. and the 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 result is now, isn't it? Yeah. Thirty five years later, we've 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 had a we've had a really good journey doing it. We've enjoyed yeah. it very much, yeah. and and we've we've earned a living along the way. Yeah. A lot of people didn't believe it would work, though, didn't no, they? No, there were a lot no, of people in the village who said, "Will you never fly yeah, that one?" Yeah, you know, yeah. that idea. But and the bank didn't believe it either, no, so you had to find another bank. No, yeah. And they 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 must have believed it to a to a degree anyway. So, uh, but there were only those three that I knew were doing that sort of thing at that time. So, yeah, you said White Post set up a year before we did, but the idea was in motion. It's just so we were one of the first, which I'm quite proud of that we uh, pioneer. We, yeah, and when you look at how. The place has moved forward since then, you know, like we, we've certainly grown rapidly that business yeah. beyond what a lot of... Well, we've grown slowly in a way, haven't we? 35 well, it, years is a long time. It's, uh, it sounds slowly, yeah. Uh, but it's self-funding. You know, you, you look at some other places, you know, some local zoos and, and what have you, and they've done what we've done in, a, in like five years, what, what took us... You know, 35. Mm. But they've had big investment, haven't they? You yeah. know, we've had to reinvest everything that we've made year on year into making it better. And, you know, eventually. And, we, and we've lived a life doing it. Mm. You know, it, it's not been a means to an end. It's no. been a way of life. I've enjoyed it. And it's given us a, a life. And you know, we, we, we didn't have an exit strategy, did we? One, we'll do this we'll float it on the stock exchange and we'll move on to something else. No, no. It was just somewhere that we lived and loved and we wanted to see it, see it be a success mm. and, and we wanted to be part of that journey. Yeah. If you come from hundreds of years of farming history and you're the last one, 
It's a yeah. bit sad, isn't it? Yeah, it would have been, yeah. Mm. So upwards and onwards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. what are we going to build next? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we've got to look at every, every, every year. You've got to be building something new so that people have something different to look at. Or replacing that's something that's getting a bit worn out, yeah. like the playgrounds yeah. this year. Well, yeah, that, that's a new thing, isn't it? It's, but, it's but, a strategy that we've done, and I think it's worked well. But preferably, hand in hand with nature, and enhancing the, the environment that we've created. Yeah, and I think I think the the greenery down the side of that uh, those farm building uh, was, has created more more uh, oh. wildlife than habitat you could, you could ever. Mm. Yeah, but it, well, the there's, wildlife there's, of a there's nothing less inspiring for any animal or bird than monoculture, is there? No. And if you in, if you include lots of different environments in an area, then wildlife will naturally flourish. Well, I don't know anywhere around here that's got as many sparrows. As we have, you know, like, and I think they're a real species in decline. And mm. uh, yeah, we've got well, rock doves there; they're rare as well. Mm. We've wandered down memory lane beautifully there. Thank you very much for for sharing your thoughts and memories of uh, of what's been a special journey. Yeah, well, it's been a pleasure. Just bring it all back. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Cannon Hall Farm podcast. We'll be back next time to talk about another important moment from the history of Cannon Hall Farm. If you want to see what a modern day Cannon Hall Farm looks like, why not pay us a visit? Tickets are available on www.cannonhallfarm.co.uk. And don't forget to follow us on your podcast provider and leave us a rating. Make it a good one, please. Anyway, we'll see you next time. I'm Farmer Rob. I'm Farmer Dave. Bye-bye, everyone. See you later. I think that went all right. Yeah, eventually, once you've done all your outtakes. <laughs>